Hey everybody, want to do a new video. We're in the middle of doing the track vehicle right now, but I uh, need to do a little side project. We have a hunting and fishing trip coming up. A well, fishing trip first. And I've been wanting to uh, build a rocket stove as a heating stove for, the, for our military tent. So we have a Arctic Bell military tent. Um, we usually go three to four people. Right now we use the military wood stove that came with the tent. So that's this, this device here, this stove. However, the problem is uh, temperature control with that is virtually impossible. Um, we put a damper on the exhaust of it, but you cook yourself out, it's tough to keep it, to get it uh, to stay stable. So, rocket stove inherent design. My plan is to take a propane tank and use a four inch square tubing as a burn chamber that comes in inside the propane tank, insulated, then it, the ex the theory of, ex of a rocket stove is the exhaust end goes on the inside, over just on the inside of the of the tank, and then exhaust at the bottom, and then straight up the flue gas. When you use the tubing, the original insertable tubing from the military tent, and uh, well, we're not going to change it. I'm just going to use it because it's got the cap. It's got the, the tubing that fits inside itself. So I'll use all that. All I'll have is the propane tank on a little stand with the rocket stove. So that's uh, introduction to what I'm going to work on. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, take the propane tank and uh, remove the, the nozzle at the top. I'm going to fill it with water. I'm going to cut the shroud off the top. And then I'm going to uh, cut the top off. Because the very top of the rocket stove, which is the propane tank, I want it to be flat so you can put like a pot on there. Anyways, I'll get started and I'll show you some video clips of the work and the progress and see how it works. Okay, we got the propane tank tuned up. <clears throat> so we took the valve stem out. I built a homemade tool to do this. They're really tight. Uh, I had to give my older son to give me a hand. Then, uh, this is obviously on there, sitting like that. So then what you do is you fill up the tank with water um, through the neck. And once it's full of water, you can't get any sparks. It displaces all of the propane inside the tank, makes it safe. So I use a little zip cutoff wheel to uh, take the ring off. Marked it in a circle for about six inches because I'm going to use a piece of six inch flat plate on top. And uh, then that'll get welded on. I'll clean this all up. But yeah, just so you know, if you ever try this at home, make sure you fill the tank with water before you start to displace. It's going to smell um, some recaptains that they use to make the propane stink because propane on its own doesn't stink. Natural gas doesn't stink. Um, you can get some liquid left behind, some of the Mercaptan liquid, if you use the tank lots. And uh, can build up in your propane lines. But it can also contain propane if the Mercaptan liquid or the, if you get some hydrocarbon liquids like um, C5s and C6s left over, you can get a little bit in your tank. So if you don't purge the tank with water or purge the tank with an inert gas, then uh, and then try cutting it or welding on it, you'll potentially have an explosion there. So... Anyways, the next step will be I'm going to get some 4x4 steel, cut a hole here for the to go in. I got to split the tank so I get access to the inside so I can build the assembly and then I'll put the tank halves back together and weld them. Okay, been working a few hours here. We got a lot of work done. As you can see, that's the opening for the, the fire tube, the burner tube to go into, and this is the burner tube. So this goes like so. And then that'll sit right in the middle. So it'll be about there. If you can see that. Yeah, there you go. It's not welded up yet, but the final position though will be um, 
about like that so there's the the wood to hole so anyways wood goes in here this will sit here Then I'm going to use, my idea here is to use a feed tube like this. And it's got holes for venting to let air in. Otherwise, there's too much restriction from the air being up high. Plus, um, it loses the velocity at the exhaust stack. So it ends up back burning in the, in the vent, uh, in the feed tube. I've tested that. So anyways, this goes in there. Then you drop in bundles of kindling from the top wood lands on the grating below and that's where you light your fires right there the uh, fire burns horizontally comes up through this chamber now that chamber right now isn't insulated so I'm going to build a tin um, sheet metal around it I've still actually yet to cut the tank in half so that I can expose all this, build the build the um, housing around it, fill it with vermiculite, and then seal it off the entire chamber. Then put the other half back on, weld it in place. Good to go. But uh, at least from here you can see how it's all going to sit. So, um, and then with the grating on the bottom, there is a clean out box. I'm going to have to build, I guess, from sheet metal. A little box that'll slide underneath and sit there and then you can just reach underneath when you're in the morning pull it out and dump it for the ash anyways it's uh, looking pretty good anyways my objective is to have this done today so I'm gonna get back to work okay thought I'd show you the box you can see I just cut it a bit square or unsquare I was uh, had an angle when I was cutting the opening. Even though I had it marked, it's uh, still come out crooked. Anyways, the grating is there, and I've got uh, two pieces of little angle iron, and I built this little box with a sheet metal. Uh, not too bad, but uh, I only have a regular break, so it's kind of challenging to do the other parts. Anyways, yeah, this just sits in like so. Catches the ash. Yeah, it's pretty tight fit, so it looks good. Okay, I've just tacked in the burner. So there's the burner. You can see that there's a gap kind of underneath the bottom for insulation. And uh, the top, like so, and that looks pretty good. Almost dead center. Maybe not perfect, but really close. So before I go further, I'm going to install that before I can't weld around it and then uh, I'll weld this side first here on the on the burner tack the bottom of the burner first then I'll tack that back on test fit it again and the next step will be building a shroud to go around this so that we can stuff it full of vermiculite and uh, sealing in the bottom as well been busy with the sheet metal work got the uh, inlet nozzle there mounted um, got this all put in as you can see I've just tacked along <clears throat> I don't want it to be airtight uh, in case there's any moisture in the beads this way they can evaporate uh, when it gets cooked um, but still not enough gap that any uh, any beads can come out got a little crooked with the sheet metal work it's definitely not what I'm good at but as you can see there's some beads in there or kind of see not really anyways I'm gonna fill the beads up to the top and then uh, put strips around weld that on and then the combustion chamber is done um, the exhaust is gonna be right here so once I finish the combustion chamber I'm gonna cut a hole for the exhaust and uh, <clears throat> the exhaust, the first piece of the exhaust pipe is this. And uh, I'm going to take, take something. It goes like that. We can hold it up. 
and uh, it can slip over top of the flange. I'll probably have to build one out of sheet metal again. Just because it's an off size, it's slightly smaller than five inches, so I couldn't buy one from the store. Anyways, we'll get working on that. Here's the vermiculite, sorry, perlite. Um, this is perlite, uh, vermiculite and perlite are both a lava rock that's been expanded. Um, I don't know the process, but basically it's just rock that's, been, that's full of air. So very uh, resistant to high temperatures. So yeah, now I'll put a little strip of sheet metal around here and tack that down the same. And then clean out the little bits I got inside and uh, start working on the exhaust. Uh, got the top sealed in. Uh, my terrible MIG welding. I'm going to blame it on the MIG welder. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's probably not why it's so bad. Anyways, this is all MIG weld. You can see the gaps are still in there. Tiny little gaps. Um, that's for the venting out the uh, exhaust gases, the, any moisture that's in the perlite. Or if it gets any from transport, if it gets flooded, it can be dried out. So yeah, I got that. We got the grating on. Stuck the legs on. We built the legs for the other rocket stove I was building, but never finished it. Realized the burn chamber was too small. So I was just showing the wife the final assembled product. It's like so. Super miniature. And in the feed tube, like so. So as you can see, you can it's coming together nicely. So what we're missing yet is the exhaust off the back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack the tank back on. That's all sitting nice and centered. I'm going to tack the tank back together, and then I'm going to work on the exhaust. I'm going to build it out of some one eighth plate. I've got some plate and I'll build a little chamber big enough to support the opening on that tube. And then that tube can just sit on there and goes up, goes up to the top of the tent. Okay, here we got the uh, burner assembly welded in. Um, some of it's welded from the inside. So, yeah, she looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. The... Uh, tube here nice and tight what well, needs to be as close as possible so that you don't have a lot of horizontal burn and it turns and goes up and I got an access hole cut here for the exhaust and I built this exhaust adapter so the exhaust goes through there and up the round hole and uh, yeah then this tube sits on here and then there uh, there's four three or four more tubes, three more tubes to go on. So going to, now I just got to weld this on here, like so, and probably give it a test burn before I bother doing anything about paint. And I'm not sure I'll have the time it's, we're leaving for the fishing trip uh, day after tomorrow. So I got packing to do, so anyways, it's coming along good. Still got to weld up the tank, but wanted to finish this before we before I weld the tank, just to be in case there was a problem. Here we go. I uh, got her done. The only thing left is the tank. So built a little cover here to go on the front. Still access it just in case. Um, yeah. Let's see. What did you haven't you seen? Got this welded on the exhaust so the gas come up go down go in there I was thinking ideally um, gases are going to tend to tr just travel like this and go in it'd be kind of nice to have deflector plates that would push the gas left and right make it make it all go around but I don't have the time to uh, work on that nor the energy right now so yeah this is it I'm wondering if I should test fire it before I bother welding the tank up. I think I will. I'm going to give it a test fire and I'll give you a video of that so we get it going. <laughs> 